Hello, everyone. Welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. Today, what we have for you is an absolutely insane amount of decks. We're going to cover the full top eight of the Lambie Open, but we also exclusively have the number one deck on Infinite Leaderboard, the number one deck, Sizer's deck in all of Marvel Snap. So we're going to get started, but first, maybe you'd like some free stuff. If you would, all you have to do is sub and comment every giveaway from every, sorry, video from last Tuesday to this coming Tuesday. Tomorrow's video has a giveaway in it, the one with the most comments gets the season pass, and we'll dole out premium mystery variants and 500 credits tied four throughout the other videos so if you want to win sub and comment we also have gameplay for these from the stream team today at noon gregor 2424 will be playing the decks from this very video make sure you check that out there's also a video from father newman newman has a bunch of um gameplay from all the decks from last week as well check that out on youtube basically what happens is the people play the deck um in their live stream and then make a video of it that goes live the next day so if you're interested interested in gameplay check it out i'd also like to shout out power on gaming for the loan of so many of their great creators for this little project all right this is sizer's lockdown this was a lockdown test and then spoiler it worked it's a great deck it's one of the best decks in all of marvel snap right now i've been playing it a fair amount to really great success in the top 500 ish um of marvel snap i had a whole process where I fell a bunch, reclimbed a bunch, but this Sizer Lockdown list is one of the lists I reclimbed into the top 500 with. It is an absolutely great deck. It is a pure lockdown list. It is basically using Nebula and Widow to mess with your opponent, and then you can storm a lane. You basically guarantee yourself that storm lane between um, Claw and Doom and Ms. Marvel, and then once you have all of those things going, you should be able to win the game by going like Sandman into Leader or Doom. All right, so this is the number one deck, and congrats to my friend Sizer, who won a tournament. The FAKs, you know F you know of FAK Crazy if you watch these videos. We're going to talk a lot more about FAK Mulwin later this video. We're, the FAKs ran a giant tournament of, like, really top players, and Sizer won, guess what, using this list. For this list, if you don't have Mobius, Mobius can be Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Um, that's why it's a... This list was called Test because it was a test between Mobius and Negasonic at first, and then it just kept winning. Iron Lad can be Jubilee. That actually hurts a reasonable amount, but it is doable. Ms. Marvel can be Omega Red. Again, dangerous, but doable. Nebula and Jeff are needed. There is just too much Professor X to not run Jeff right now. We'll talk more about the prevalence of Jeff later this video. And White Widow can be Medusa because that extra power is really threatening in a lane. It also helps prevent Professor X. So turn one, you want to play Nebula, preferably blind. I like blind mid so that I can then blind Invisible Woman right. Not Invisible Woman, excuse me. Blind uh, White Widow right. Turn two is Invisible Woman, Jeff, or Widow. Invisible Woman is here largely to protect um, your ongoings. So you're trying to protect your Ms. Marvel, and you're trying to protect your Claw. If you don't have either, then Invisible Woman is not especially useful, or if you're not seeing a lot of ongoing hate, Invisible Woman is a very replaceable card otherwise, although she does lead to big cube wins when opponents don't know what's behind her. There's also the possibility of either um, Jeff or White Widow on turn one. I tend to aim for Widow. Turn three, Storm, and I usually Storm either the Nebula or uh, Widow lane, depending on how much I think they're going to be able to play. If I think they're going to be able to play a lot and fill the lane, I will Storm the Nebula lane. If not, I will Storm the Widow lane. Um, it, also, I, by then, I should have some idea if they're planning on playing on Nebula over and over, then I'll Storm the Widow lane. Get the idea? Hopefully. Good. Then turn four, Ms. Marvel behind Invisible Woman, but fairly often I'd like to... Um, Iron Lad here. If I'm Iron Ladding, I'm Iron Ladding one to the left of the Stormed Lane, because if I hit Claw, I want my plus eight to hit there. Turn five, Sandman is more or less equal to Claw. If I'm playing Claw, it's behind a visible woman usually, but Sandman is more or less equal to Claw. Look at their deck. Are they the, a deck that's playing more than one thing? If so, Claw. Um, turn six is generally Leader or Doom, but also a very good play is Jeff and either Lad or Ms. Marvel. Uh, remember that Jeff will get around the Sandman limitation just fine. Leader, if you think they're going to drop something big and you just need to win one lane, you've already locked up that Storm lane. Doom, if you still need to go wide. I tend My big weakness with this deck is I tend to overplay Doom a little bit. If I played Leader more, I'd probably win more, and I'm winning plenty with this list. All right, one last look at this 
deck. This is, again, the number one deck by about 200 points on the infinite leaderboard. And it would be more, but Sizer went and tested a bunch of weird stuff on ladder and lost an extra couple hundred snap points to it. But this is currently the number one list. If you'd like to see the number two list in all of Marvel Snap right now, please check yesterday's video, FAK Crazy, who went number two in February, number one in March, number one in April, and is now number two in um, May, is number two, and we have that deck yesterday. Please hit that sub button. We bring you more decks and more coverage than anyone. We cover all things Marvel Snap. If you want a bundle guide, check a short about that. If you want a review of every card in 2024, we have a podcast out that does that. We give you at least three new decks every single weekday. I think today's video has nine decks in it, something silly like that. So please sub if you love Marvel Snap and want great content. If you're already subbed, like, comment, watch as long as you can. It really does help the channel, and we really appreciate it. All right, we're first going to start out with the top eight decks. The three are Whimsic, Hydro, and Fajr plus Akata. They played the exact same list, so we're not going to look at them separately. We're not going to do full guides for these three lists, um, but it's better to know what other people were playing, and we are going to do full guides for each of the top four decks, like we just did for the Sizer list. We're also going to do a Last Chance review of Namora. Have no fear, I did not forget that. All right, Whimsic... Uh, played Kyra Thanos. This is a classic Thanos build, the kind you would honestly, outside of the presence of Red Hulk, have just seen in January. In Jan, oh, well, I guess and Mockingbird, um, and Cull. So I guess early February you would see this list. Sorry, early February, as soon as Cull came out, this was fundamentally the working Thanos list that was the best on the meta. Um, this is basically that list. Oh no, March, because we have hope. I'm really bad at knowing when, what month's cards come out. The cards this year are completely nuts. We're going to talk about that when we get to questions of the day at the very end of the video. But like, Kyra and Scar barely played. But like, Cull, Mockingbird, um, and Hope, just and Red Hulk. Jesus. All right, whatever. This is an expensive deck, but this made the top eight before getting beat. It is Thanos plus big stuff. And then saying, I've got Shang to shut you down, but you can't Shang me. Ideally, if you do something like um, hope into call into big thing, you can then um, spend a turn playing Scar with either Kyra or Shang-Chi. Basically, if you think they're going to Shang, you can drop your Kyra. Um, if they don't have Shang, you can drop your Shang-Chi, and then the Scar, the extra 11 power, is huge. You don't even need hope to do this because you can go call into Devil Dino. You can just play a couple stones early, get a Mockingbird out on three. If you can go Mockingbird, call Devil Dino, right? Like, and then you can just go two, two cost call with whatever the hell else. You're just winning that game, right? So Thanos, everyone thinks was bad, but hey, spoiler, we're going to see a lot of Thanos in this top eight. Before we get to another Thanos list, though, Hydro, which I spelled very awkwardly here, Hydro played this mill deck. It's really impressive that this mill deck made it, because this mill deck is running almost no tech. The only real tech here, I guess you can count Cannonball as tech, Cannonball sort of tech, um, Cosmo and Mobius, right? These are proactive tech cards. Cosmo is a way to shut down, um, I mean, based on the top eight, mostly opponent draw, and Mobius is really, really great Loki tech, and again, that's going to be really important here, but this mill package, the Yandu Zemo Gladiator, not really good against Thanos, and there is a lot of Thanos in this tournament, so that this mill did so well is hugely, hugely impressive. This is a list I'm personally looking forward to trying out. I am a Juggernaut stan. Juggernaut is so freaking good right now, um, but this has the full mill package of Yandu, Cable, Zemo, and Gladiator, all four of those cards. It's running Morph as a way to say, if I'm running into opposing big things, I can just steal their best cards. Just great list. Very, very cool to see this do so well. Um, if you're milling away all their cheap stuff, it's really hard for them to compete with a Nebula. Armor is just very powerful. Cannonball to blow up their big things at the end when they can't stop it is awesome. Really cool list. Very impressed with Hydro's finish. Next up is the Fajr Thanos Loki X. This won a card whips tournament earlier in the week, and thus was um, a few people played it in this tournament. Fajr played it, and I forget the other player's name. Please excuse me. Let's go back two slides, three slides. And Akata both played this exact list. I'm going to give you a little spoiler. Sorry, this is the only spoiler I'm going to give you for this whole thing. There's a deck that's very similar to this that made top four. We're going to do a full review of it then, so we're not going to talk about it now, but this is one of the best decks in Marvel Snap right now, one that everyone is going to have to very quickly learn to be aware of. All right, last chance review for Namora before we go on. Um, 
you have to skip Namora, I think, unless you're swimming in resources. It's not that the Namora isn't good, because Namora is a very good and very powerful card. The reason you're skipping Namora is that they only release really good cards now, and Namora is a very narrow good card. You want cards probably that go into a lot of the best decks, and Namora goes into one excellent deck. Now, that deck is very powerful. You can find it in yesterday slash Friday's video. It's in Sunday and Friday's video, different variations of it. That's the Namora list. There's others that throw a Sandman in, but like it's the same basic concept of that list. That is the only place to play Namora. Given that, unless you're like dying to play that one deck, this card is a fairly simple skip. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you. It's a very powerful card, but because it's disruptible, because it only goes in one place, if this is ever ever like really meta, it's very easily answerable with a simple Cosmo, with a simple Magneto, and as such, it's not a card that you should go out of your way to get. Again, unless you're swimming in resources or absolutely dying to play the one Safety Blade deck that makes use of it. Shouts to Darth Tater as well. All right, top four decks were Toto, Desmond, Rain, and Molwyn. Toto, I'm not familiar with. Desmond is one of the most important players in all of Marvel Snap's history. He's a tournament player from Korea who makes an amazing, amazing amount of decks. Rain is a new Twitch streamer, a uh, smaller Twitch streamer who just won a tournament with that deck we just looked at earlier in the week. Um, earlier in this video, but the tournament won by Rain was earlier in the week. Finished in second place this time. And then Molwin, FAK Molwin won. And I'm going to tell you how to find Molwin. Molwin is also new to being able to, like, the public facing Marvel Snap, and you should definitely go check out Mulwin and give a follow. All right, so Toto was in fourth place with this very, very cool list. Um, you know I'm excited to see Baron Mordo in the top four. Iceman and Mordo, and with Supergiant as these really, really, really disruptive cards. And then everything else here is just a lot of power or a lot of control that your opponent's going to have a hard time dealing with. Uh, this is another one I'm super duper excited to try because I think this is incredible. All right, so Jeff and Supergiant are required for this list. They're the only expensive cards that are totally required, though. Red Hulk um, can just be Magneto. You lose a bit, but not too much. Iron Lad can be Jubilee. And I want to be clear that that's, um, like, almost always just kind of completely fine here. Like, just be careful. Know what's still in your deck. This is the kind of deck you'd really like a deck tracker if you're going to do um, Jubilee and not Lad. Like, it's fine without a tracker with Lad. But if not, you just really want to know what Jubilee is going to grab. But if it gets something cheap, then you're going to draw something better next turn. If it gets something big, then it gets something big. So Jubilee is more or less fine here. Red Guardian and Nocturne are just like the best in slot threes. Um, I would try Scarlet Witch and Rogue, respectively. Although, flip them. For Nocturne, I would try Scarlet Witch. And for Red Guardian, I would try Rogue. Cool. All right. So we had a version of this list on Friday from our friend Ika. This is a better version. Like, this is just a more disruptive version. Turn one, Iceman. And then um, turn two is Jeff or Mordo. Those are way better than Maximus. I probably, personally, prioritize Mordo over Jeff, but it could go either way. Because, like, you can play Jeff later, but you don't really want to play Mordo after three. So turn three, Nocturne is better than Killmonger, and you can Red Guardian when there's a really good target. If there's an Angela, if you think they're going to drop a Werewolf in a certain place, so on and so forth, that's when you want to drop a Red Guardian. Turn four, Supergiant is the freaking key to the deck, so you want a Supergiant. If not Giant, then Lad. If not either, then you're playing either two twos or Nocturne. Um... Turn five, you can play Killmonger and Maximus behind that um, Invisible Woman. Especially if they're playing, not Invisible Woman, excuse me, Supergiant, especially if they're playing a lot of ones. Um, you can also try Ronin or Claw just fine. Worth noting that the reason Supergiant is so much better than Invisible Woman in this deck is not necessarily what it does for your deck. You can also just run um, your own Invisible Woman for Supergiant, right? It's how disruptive it is for the opponent and how important turn five is for a lot of decks in the meta. If you play Supergiant, for example, Professor X is basically a dead card for your opponent, unless they had Ravona. And that kind of thing is extremely powerful. Turn six, Red Hulk or Maximus and a tech card. Or Lad with Maximus. Or you can just drop a Ronin in here. So one of the things you really like to do with this list is you would really like to, after that Supergiant, have Ronin in play. And then Ronin is huge, or Claw is huge, right? And then you Maximus pump up that Ronin, which is six power, and then with that you can play Iron Lad, which could get a Claw, could get a Red Hulk, could get whatever. Could get a Red Guardian to remove a card's, uh, an opponent's card, or just play the Red Guardian or Killmonger. You see how that works? There's so much power in it. It's really, really powerful. I love this list. Super cool Props to Toto for the fourth place finish. Uh, just love it. All right, Desmond was in 
third place with our top ranked Loki. This is not the Loki list that has been in the meta. This is the Loki Zemo list. And even then, it's an awkward version of the Loki Zemo list. This is not what I would have expected. There's no Shang-Chi. There's no um, US Agent, which has been like a standard. And there is a Yandu, which has not been seen. This is basically saying I'm going to mill people out. And then, of course, of course, it's um, going to run into a million Thanos list and have a really hard time. But it says I'm going to mill you out and then play your deck. You don't have your cards. I have your cards. That's super cool and super powerful. Desmond is a brilliant player, and this is, of course, a brilliant deck. Again, Desmond is one of the most important players in the history of Marvel Snap. So you can find Desmond on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Desmond Korea. Do me a favor, check out Desmond. You will not regret it. Desmond um, always just features the coolest decks. Loki, Zemo, and Gladiator are required. The other cards can be replaced. Red Guardian can be Rogue or Mobius. Jeff is a requirement now because of Professor X being a card, but you can try Sentinel if you must. Snow Guard can just be Maria Hill. White Widow can be whatever card generation too. Personally, when I try this list, I am going to replace White Widow with um, U.S. Agent, just so you're aware of where my head is at. I think U.S. Agent's a better card than White Widow unless you're running Nebula in a like lockdown -y list. All right, so turn one, Quinjet is generally better than Snow Guard for this list. Um... Because if you're not going to Loki, you really, 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 because of the cost curve, want to be Agent Coulsoning. And Snow Guard is more or less equal to Yandu, and you have to determine. If you have um, Col uh, Agent Coulson or um, blah, 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 Cable, then you almost certainly want a Yandu. If not, you want a Snow Guard. Turn two, Cable is um, better than Jeff, and that's more or less equal to White Widow. Cable is really works for both game plans. Cable is one of the key cards of the deck. It works for both Loki as an extra card. It gives you information about your opponent's playing, and it works for the mill plan. Turn three is Coulson or Gladiator slash Zemo. It depends what your plan is, right? Uh, I tend to go Coulson first. I'd like to save my Gladiator Zemo later, but that's fine if you play it sooner. Um, I generally, I always play Gladiator before Zemo if I have both, because Zemo pulling out the cheapest thing makes Gladiator less likely to hit, and those are generally better than Red Guardian or Cosmo. Cosmo is almost certainly a turn five or six play for the games that uh, you don't Loki, and Red Guardian is like obvious one to play it's a tech card you play it when you want a tech card turn four is loki or gladiator zemo again um you can also play generated cards at this point generated cards are obvious at any point so just play generated cards when it makes sense uh loki or gladiator zemo turn five is loki or obviously the second of those mill cards so if you went colson you go gladiator zemo right at, with whatever else you could and then turn six you're playing hopefully generated cards because at this point you've basically played out everything else that's how you play this list it is really really good and really really strong props to desmond for it um honestly like this ran this is third place because it lost to first place and it ran head first into a straight up hard counter or this could have won the whole damn thing all right worth noting there are two Zemo decks in the top eight, which is way more than anyone would have guessed. I still keep hearing that Zemo was like a mid card, maybe a miss. I've been arguing that forever. Zemo is his own archetype, and that archetype is good. There were four Shang in the top eight. Not every Thanos had Shang, and one non-Thanos deck had Shang. So the demise of Shang is greatly, greatly exaggerated. But what's really important here is that there are four Loki and um, four Thanos those two remain the scourge of the meta. We keep acting like they're dead. They are not. They are incredible. Mobius was also in four decks, which makes sense um, with all the Loki. But like, hey, it's time to start taking Thanos and Loki way more seriously, which means it's time to start playing more Mobius, which is going to push down Loki, but push up Thanos. Although Thanos Loki can just do both. What's really, really, really important here is that seven of eight of these decks feature Jeff. That's wild. I think Jeff is just a must-have card. This is a very Professor X heavy, lockdown heavy, location control heavy meta. Jeff is completely irreplaceable. Yes, even by Nocturne for these lists. I think Jeff is the most must-have of must-have cards. Seven of eight of the top eight lists had Jeff. Wow. All right. What you're going to let me know is anything else cool you see about either these decks or the stats. That's how you enter today's giveaway. You let me know something cool you saw in either the stats or these decks. All right, our number two deck is the Rain Thanos Loki Professor X list. This is the list we talked about earlier that I said we'd get back to. Guess what? We're back to it. There is one major difference here. These uh, Rain is running Red Hulk, not Magneto. 
When it rained one earlier in the week, he was running Magneto over Red Hulk by accident because last weekend's weekend missions had Magneto. He went back to Red Hulk and came in second place. This list runs Mobius. This list is generally, um, like, it sort of counters everything, right? If you're facing Bounce, that Shadow King wins the game. If you're facing something big, Shang wins the game. Professor X gives you game against, against Hela. You have game against absolutely everything with this completely, completely, insanely good list. I've been playing. I've had it made. It feels gross if you haven't played it yet. Uh, that Thanos rework cannot come soon enough. All right, you can find Rain at twitch.tv slash rainsnet. Please do check out Rain, smaller streamer. Smaller streamers, um, especially those who are playing really well, should get our support. So go check out Rain. Hopefully um, you find them interesting and let them know I sent you. All right, so this is just real expensive. Thanos is always really expensive at this point, which is part of why I really want that rework. So Thanos, Mockingbird, Jeff, Loki, and Hope are all needed for this. Mobius can be Rogue and Red Hulk can be Magneto. So again, this deck basically won another tournament, another real tournament earlier this week. This is one of the top decks in Marvel Snap. Here's how you play. Turn one, you want to draw stone. Turn two, mind stone is your priority basically always. That's better than draw, which is better than any other stone, which is better than Jeff. Jeff waits for later. Jeff is a get out of jail free card. Turn three, if you can play Mockingbird, you want to play Mockingbird. Although if you have Professor X, you're perfectly happy to play Psylocke to try and do an early Professor X. Or you can just drop Vision with that Psylocke, and if you don't have any of those, Hope. Hope is wonderful. Turn 4, Professor X or Vision if you can. If not, you're dropping a card on Hope. Loki on Hope is great here, um, especially if your hand is not amazing. And Mockingbird on turn 4 is still a 4-9. You would be happy to play. Turn 5, Vision or Professor X. If you can drop a Red Hulk, especially if it's a 9-power Red Hulk, please feel free to do so because you played Hope. Um, you can also Professor X or Vision with a stone. You'll win a fair amount of Professor X lanes by Professor Xing with, like, a soul or a power stone. And then turn 6 is you either drop big or you tech big. Because you do have Shang-Chi, you do have Shadow King. So you can also just drop tech cards to win the game if, you, if you're not going to drop that Red Hulk. If you drop Shang-Chi or Shadow King with Mockingbird, wow. Cool. This is the second best list, second place list of the tournament. I don't know if it's the second best list. I think this actually might be the best list in the wider meta, but it got eaten by the number one list, which is Molwin. FAK Molwin won with, yup, you heard it right, Cerebro 3. Yeah, I did not have that on my bingo card. I didn't have that in the top 50 to 100 of my bingo card. Um, this is the Cerebro 3 list that won this humongous cash prize tournament. Yes, that is U.S. Agent. All right, this is a really cheap list, though, because U.S. Agent and Jeff are the only threes that you really need. Um, Mobius can be Cosmo here. Before we go forward, though, I spoke to Mulwin about this list earlier. What Mulwin says is Mulwin is planning on posting really cool lists on his Twitter. So if you have Twitter, don't download Twitter for this. Twitter is a shitty app. But if you have Twitter, do yourself a favor. Mulwin underscore Snap. This is one of the top players in Marvel Snap. Uh, Team FAK is killing it of late, especially um, they're probably the most successful team in all Marvel Snap since the Italians have mostly stopped playing. And FAK Mulwin himself was the number four player in all of Marvel Snap last season and then just won this huge tournament, making a claim to be one of the top players in all of the game. Check him out on Twitter, Mulwin underscore Snap. So turn one, you bast if Cerebro Mystique are in hand. If not, you're perfectly fine holding that. Turn two, Invisible Woman is better than Sentinels, better than Jeff, and Invisible Woman is amazing here. Turn three, Cerebro, uh, you should know what your opponent plays if you're going to play Cerebro naked, but you can play Killmonger behind Invisible Woman or Cerebro behind Invisible Woman or alone. Try and hold Cerebro until you have Mystique, please. Um, or you can play Luke behind Invisible Woman, um, and then you could just Mobius or Luke just perfectly playing out in the open, usually, unless a location says, please hold Luke. Mobius is your most safe and easy to play three here. Turn four. If you played Cerebro, you won't now want to play Mystique. If not, you can play two twos. You can also play Shang-Chi behind Invisible Woman if you think that's going to be one of their big lanes. You need to know if that's going to be one of their big lanes or you're going to hold that. Um, turn five is generally speaking a three plus a two. A two. Um, sometimes you'll end up going like a Jeff or a Sentinel and then playing that first card behind uh, Invisible Woman or dr then dropping Cerebro. That's perfectly fine. Turn six is either Cerebro Mystique or Shang in a two. You can also, if you already have Cerebro Mystique, spend turn five going Shang in whatever place and then um, and then 
best for Cerebro Mystique so that they will get the buff as well. Oof. This list is freaking insane. This is the best Cerebro list probably ever in the game. Oh, um, US Agent is the two you really want on turn five, by the way. US Agent is incredible. Once you know where they're going to play big things, he's a 211. But then if you get him to seven power, he's a 217. Um, and that feels like it wins games. So I think US Agent is sort of the secret sauce to why this list is so freaking dominant. If you don't have US Agent, you can try Valkyrie, but it's so much worse because I don't know if you notice this, but US Agent costs two. So that's that. Hopefully you enjoyed this look into the Lambie Open because this was the winning deck, which, pff, wow. All right, we're on to questions of the day. Then we'll do our shoutouts and we out of here. So question of the day, Obehave says a streamer that he was watching claimed ranking is subject to time and RNG only. True or false? Incredibly and obviously false. Now, you will climb, as long as you're above 50% with a positive Q rate, you're going to climb ranking, right? But how fast you climb, how high you can go is severely capped uh, because eventually your wins start counting for less. Moreover, the top players in tournaments are often the top players in ladder. Everyone who's great in the game isn't at the top of ladder, right? But many of the top players in the game in tournaments are top ladder players. That's not a coincidence. Being at Marvel Snap is a skill. Now, time matters. I'm going to tell you straight up. I spend a lot of time. I'm pretty good at Marvel Snap. I think that's fair to say. I am currently ranked 470 or so. Um, I should be higher. I had one bad day or I'd be in the 300s by now. What are you going to do? But I'm ranked 470, so I've never tried to climb before. I usually sit around 10,000, play, stay in too long, test decks, try and learn things for the channel, so on and so forth. So was I worse when I was doing that than I am now? No, I'm still the same person. I'm still the same player when I try, right? I'm still every bit as good as I was last month, except this month I've decided to take the ladder seriously and climb. That's perfectly possible. That's true of probably many people. However... That doesn't mean that everyone who's ranked 10,000 can be ranked 500. Some people's natural skill level is what it is. Being good at snap is very much skill. Being high ladder ranked can have a lot to do with time. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Blobby asks about games claim about all new cards being good now. Every new card is not good, but they try and make every new card useful. For example, even with the Grandmaster buff, I've been amazingly unimpressed with the card. The sheer locations that it requires are just obnoxious, um, and there's enough junk that makes its ability to work kind of complicated and obnoxious. Um, but almost every card they release is good. They're clearly intentionally designing cards to be good so that you have to try and get new cards. Um, do you need all these new cards? Can you play the game without Nocturne and Red Guardian? Yeah, without too much trouble. So what you're trying to decide is what you like to play. For me, you're not, like, Cam says you decide what's going to be meta. I think that's, I mean, for, like, the top 100 to 500 people, maybe, and not me. But, like, sure. At that point, you could decide what's meta and go from there. But if your goal is to enjoy this game, I think you should figure out what you like to play and you're good at. Basically, see, when you climb, what is it you're playing with? And then think of what kinds of cards and decks go well with that. Um... If you're, like, always winning with Wong decks, right? Like, if you love Wong decks, and you know how to snap and retreat really well with Wong decks, then Namora's a really good card for you. But if that's not the case, because that's your only deck, you don't want Namora. If you like move decks, or just like really general good stuff decks, then you should probably have opened, and I said to, open for Nocturne. If you like Bounce, my advice was open for Sage. But if you don't like Bounce, and... She's got a home and an occasional lockdown around the field deck, yes. But if you don't like Bounce, then Sage might not be right to open for you. What you need to do is spend the time identifying what you're good with and what you like, and then opening for that. Richie wants to know what kind of losing streak I have to happen before I change decks. And I almost never change decks because of a losing streak. Um, I'm very stubborn. I change decks fairly often. I probably change decks too much, even while I'm winning. Um, I very rarely get more than 40 games in with a deck. The only, I'll change decks if I lose like two or three games in a row, if I'm not feeling good and the deck is doing what it's supposed to. If I can start to feel like the deck isn't working or the deck isn't right, I'll change decks right away. Um, what I change decks for mostly is I start to get bored. Sometimes I'll win with a deck and I just start to feel bored by it. Um, I love Sizer's deck, right? But I started to get bored by it. I played it for, I played it because I had um, a bunch of win four missions. 
and it's got fours in it. So I played it for a whole bunch for that, and I climbed, and then I was like, but I'm bored with this now, because lockdown's not really my style. It's playing one card a turn, which if you've watched the channel for any time, you know isn't for me. So I changed decks. Um, could I keep winning with it? Yeah, I'd assume so, but I wasn't having fun, so I stopped. Horse not asks the best way to eat leftover pizza, and I suggest with your face. Um, eating it up in a oven or toaster is ideal, but when I want pizza, that's not an option. I, I microwave it. Oh. <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> I microwave it just out of sheer, I need pizza in my face when I need pizza. Also, it's driving me crazy. This has nothing to do with the question. People that are like, New Haven style pizza's the best. Please shut up. Go away. Like, just what are we talking about here? Like, New York pizza has had the best pizza for 100 years. Chicago casseroles are very good. They're very tasty. They're not pizza. Chill out. New York pizza is the only pizza. Move on with that noise. If you'd like your question right out in tomorrow's video, please leave one in the comments. My son is coming, so we are going to fly away through the last of this. So check out patreon.com slash snap judgments. If you want exclusive videos, we will have an exclusive Lambie interview up this week at the $10 tier. You also get the shout outs in the video. And again, flying through because I hear my son wanting to come out. Abigail Gieslin, Mandatory Burnout, Cables, David G. Wingfield, Direwolf, LAB, Father Newman, Good Dog Gamer, This Is The Way, Inc., Jane Every, Jane David Taldino, Kiertix Lee, Koire, Pyrofros, The Goat Seeker, Ten Man Falcon, Doku, Ginger Prime, Philip Rakovich, Haplo, Kenny Loggins, Rob Silverman, The Biza, Extra Fee, Skippy G, Tommy Nyquist, Snapchat League Season 1 League Champion, King of Bros, Black Dahlia, The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, Ryan Wood, Kevsi Hoda, Luna Chris, Louis Antunes, Models, Mod Supreme, Darth Tater, Rema Setala, Brian Kaufman, Tristan H. Martin, Fuzzy Dunlop, Spectrumix, Hoot, Matt H., Mikey Hedgings, No Flex, Ocularis, Craig Starry, Pretty Chill, Seamus, who's been watching on time, Two Ties, whose deck got me to infinite, The Pirate King, Tucker, The Homie Min, and of course, Gunny T, where the T stands for. Thank you for watching. Told you this one was a big one. See you tomorrow for another Snap Take. Tomorrow, we talk all about Sasquatch. If you're interested in that, check it out. Don't forget to check out the shorts for a bundle guide and more on that last chance review. Peace.